In this video, we're going to talk about the top 50 mathematical symbols. Most of these symbols will be in English, but there are some that involve the Greek alphabet. So let's go ahead and begin. The first one, something that you're all familiar with, the plus sign, which represents addition. Next, we have the minus sign, which is associated with subtraction. And then there's the X sign, which is multiplication. And then we have division. Now we also have the plus and minus sign. So for instance, if you see five plus or minus three, it could be five plus three, which is eight, or five minus three, which is two. The next symbol is the factorial symbol. For instance, if we have five factorial, that's five times four times three times two times one. Next up, we have percentage. Let's say if we want to find 20% of 200, that will be 200 times 0.20, which is 40. Next, we have the square root symbol. For instance, the square root of 36 is 6. The square root of 49 is 7. Following that, we have the cube root symbol. The cube root of 8 is 2 because 2 times 2 times 2 is 8. The cube root of 27 is 3 because it takes three threes to get to 27 when multiplied. Now the next symbol is the absolute value symbol. The absolute value of 4 is 4. The absolute value of negative 4 is positive 4. So with the absolute value symbol, whatever is inside of it, it will always output zero or a positive result. Now let's talk about equivalence. This sign means equal to. This sign means it is not equal to. For instance, x could be equal to 4. This means that x is not equal to 7. Next you have the approximate symbol. x may be approximately 3.46. It could be 3.461289, and it could keep on going. But when you're rounding, it's good to use the approximation symbol. Now, this symbol means similar or is associated with similarity. For instance, you could say that triangle ABC is similar to triangle DEF. They could be similar in the sense that they have similar ratios. This symbol means congruent. Triangle ABC could be congruent to triangle DEF. Now let's talk about inequalities. So this symbol means greater than, and this symbol means less than. For instance, we could say that X is greater than five, or we could say that Y is less than three. This symbol means greater than or equal to, and this one means less than or equal to. For instance, x can be equal to or greater than 1, and y could be less than or equal to negative 2. So on a number line, here's 0, here's 5, we would have an open circle on 5, and we would shade to the right. The open circle indicates that it doesn't equal to 5, but it's simply greater than 5. For the next one, to plot y is less than 3, we would shade to the left, but we still have an open circle at 3. Next, x is equal to or greater than 1. Because it includes 1, we're going to have a closed circle. Now for the next one, y is less than or equal to negative 2. So we're going to have a closed circle at negative 2, but we're going to shade to the left since it's less than negative 2. So those are some inequalities that you want to be familiar with. Now, there are some other ones. If you see two arrows pointing to the right, that means it's much greater than. For instance, let's say x is significantly greater than 1. That means x is a very, very large number. It's much greater than 1. Or you could say x is significantly greater than 1,000. This means that y is significantly less than some number. 
maybe it's less than 0.1 or like very very like much less than that so when you see two arrows it indicates extreme inequalities now let's talk about some math symbols that you may encounter in geometry so if you see this symbol it means that the two lines are perpendicular to each other so here's a line here's a perpendicular line they meet at right angles so let's say that's line L this is line M you could say that line L is perpendicular to line M this symbol means that the two lines are parallel so let's say we have line K and line J these lines are parallel they don't intersect so you could say that J is parallel to K if you see this this means line AB if you see this with one arrow it means ray AB so a line can go in both directions a ray points in one direction and if you see this this is segment AB so this is a line this is a ray a ray has a beginning but then it continues forever in the other direction a segment is limited in length it has a beginning and an end if you see this symbol it means a right angle think of a right triangle you'll see this uh, 90 degree right angle there this means the angle is acute or it's less than 90 degrees and this symbol means degrees so if you see 80 with this that means 80 degrees or 70 degrees sometimes you may see that with reference to temperature it's 75 degrees Fahrenheit or 64 degrees Celsius now if we see this symbol it means proportional to so for instance let's say if we have an equation gravitational force let's say it's g m1 m2 over r squared so we could say that the gravitational force is proportional to the mass of the planet so this simply relates two variables together now when you see a colon in math it represents a ratio for instance this means five to three maybe there's five boys for every three girls in the class or maybe there's four marbles for every maybe there's four blue marbles for every seven red marbles in the back so when you see a colon it indicates ratio if you see the letter i in math this means imaginary it's an imaginary number i is equal to the square root of negative one i squared is negative one i to the third is negative i i to the fourth is equal to positive one now the next symbol which looks like a u this symbol means union typically you're joining two things together so let's say if you have a number line and you need to find the domain of a function which is a very common situation in math and let's say the domain represents everything that's shaded in blue so the domain would be negative infinity to negative 4 since we have a, an open circle at negative 4 we're going to use a parenthesis now we want to combine it with this section so we want to combine those two so we would use the union symbol to connect them together now 3 is included so we're going to use a bracket to include 3 and then it's going to go to a positive infinity so u represents union this means intersection intersection is where the two groups where they intersect or they have some kind of commonality so let's say if you have two Venn diagrams this is a B and a and B share some common value so 7 would be part of the intersection of a and B because it's found in both that's where they intersect now the next symbol that we need to talk about is this 
the interval a to b use in parentheses this is an open interval now using brackets this interval from a to b that's a closed interval so notice what we did with negative 4 because we had parentheses we use an open circle whereas for 3 we had a bracket so we use a closed circle because 3 is on the interval negative 4 is not so that's the difference between an open interval and a closed interval now there's another symbol here that I haven't officially mentioned but I kind of mentioned it already and that is the affinity symbol so whenever you see this that is infinity that means it's a very very high number a very very high non-specific number is a better way to describe it now if you're taking calculus a symbol that you're going to see is the integral symbol it's associated with accumulation but that's a topic for another day. Now let's move on to angles. So this is a very common angle you'll see. This angle is theta. So think of like sine theta or cosine theta. Or if you have a triangle, the angle in the triangle will be theta. Now there's another angle, which is typically complementary to theta. And this is phi. So perhaps you're dealing with vectors and Let's say you have the x-axis, the y-axis, and you have a vector pointing in this direction. Now this angle relative to the x-axis, or between the x-axis and the vector, we'll call this vector r, that angle may be 50 degrees. The other angle between a vector and the y-axis, this is typically phi, but it can vary, but sometimes you'll see the other angle is phi. And that's usually complementary to theta. So this one is going to be 40 degrees. Now sometimes you may see angles represented as alpha. That's a part of the Greek alphabet. Some angles will be represented as beta. In trig, sometimes you'll see some indifference formulas like sine alpha, cosine beta. And then you have gamma another Greek alphabet. And then there's the Greek alphabet sigma. Sigma corresponds to sum. So for instance, let's say I have the summation of 3n from n equal 1 to 5. What this means is if I plug in 1, I get 3. If I plug in 2, I get 6. If I plug in 3, I get 9. 4, I get 12. 5, I get 15. So you start here. You stop at the fifth term. And the sigma sign means summation, meaning you add up all the terms. So this answer will be the sum of those five numbers. So that's 9 plus 9, which is 18, plus 12. 18 plus 12 is 30, plus 15 is 45. So the value of this expression is 45. So anytime you see sigma, it means sum or summation. Next up, we have the symbol pi. Pi is 3.14159 with some other numbers after that. But perhaps you've seen pi in this formula. Circumference is 2 pi r. That's the circumference of a circle or the area of a circle, pi r squared. Typically, when you're dealing with circles, you have pi in it. The next symbol is delta. Now, you might see delta in two forms. You might see it as a triangle. In this case, this represents change. So delta x, that's the change in x, or delta y, the change in y. Delta x might be the difference between two x values, x2 minus x1. Delta y could be the final y value minus the initial y value, but it represents the change in something. Now you might see delta also in the form of a Greek symbol. So this also means delta. This symbol is the Greek alphabet lambda. 
And you might encounter this when in chemistry or physics when you're talking about electromagnetic radiation, especially light. For instance, the speed of light is equal to the wavelength times the frequency. C is the speed of light, which is 3 times 10 to the 8 meters per second. Lambda represents the wavelength measured in meters. And F is the frequency measured in hertz or 1 over seconds. So that's where lambda comes into play. Typically, you'll see it represented as the wavelength of light or some form of electromagnetic radiation. The next Greek symbol is rho. If you're taking physics, you might see this in when you're dealing with gauge pressure, where it's equal to rho gravitational acceleration times height. So in this case, rho represents density. So in this particular formula, it's the density of a fluid. The density of water is 1,000 kilograms per cubic meter. That's in physics, but in chemistry, it's one gram per milliliter. The last symbol we're going to talk about is the omega symbol. In physics, you might see this as angular frequency. And you may also see the omega symbol in this form. When it comes to electricity, this is the unit of resistance, which is ohms. So those are some common symbols that you'll encounter when dealing with math. And also when you're dealing with the math part of sciences like chemistry and physics.